Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to share with you a very interesting topic, quite a heavy topic. It's a topic that brought me or motivated me so strongly towards the spiritual path in the first place. And it's not just something intellectual for me, at least, uh, but something that even before I found spirituality, I felt very intuitively about and very passionate about uh, for reasons that I probably didn't comprehend so much back then. And then, of course, in the years ahead, I also had a lot of astral experiences in relation to it, which uh, helps me to feel a little bit more um, qualified, you could say, to speak about this at length. So I'll be sharing some of those experiences too in this video, which are very interesting. So this video is about the planet Herculubus, otherwise known as Planet X or Nibiru in mainstream exoteric sources. Mm, sometimes those planets are mixed up with other types of planets and theories. We're not interested uh, too much in all of that. We are studying the, the Gnostic teachings here from the Masters. And most of the time, those kinds of sources usually give false or fear-mongering information about it. But in Gnosis, as many of you know, following this channel, the Masters, as with almost everything, strive and endeavor to discover these things for themselves through investigating them in the superior worlds, such as through astral travel. And they discover accurate information hidden there in the akasha of the inner worlds. And so the real esoteric universal name of this planet is known as Herculubus, which is part of the planetary system of Tylo. So just to state it bluntly at the beginning of this video, this planet will arrive near Earth very soon causing devastations of many kinds, bringing the final end to this era and bringing about a new one. It sounds perhaps ludicrous to many of you at first, I understand that, but one does not need to uh, watch what they don't want to watch. So, you know, as with all of this uh, information, let those with ears hear, hear, right? So, this is what this video will be about, studying this planet, and more importantly, more fundamentally, the implications uh, that this has for our life here and now in this present moment. So this is the same planet which brought about the great cataclysms to the continent of Atlantis, and also to the previous root races such as Lemuria. You can study more about the uh, previous human races in the description below, along with many other links and resources which will relate to the contents of this video. I will also leave a free PDF book by Master Rabalu, uh, who talks about this planet. I read this book when I was about 16. It was the first spiritual book and first Gnostic book I ever read, which led me down quite the rabbit hole from an early age. And you know, this is where I am today. So as stated, when this planet shortly arrives, it will bring with it great cataclysms. In the previous Age of Aquarius video, we talked about how Leo will serve its punishments according to the law of karma, and about how more difficulties on this planet will continue as we advance up to those final moments of Herculubus. Things such as more diseases like Covid, more earthquakes, storms, more wars, uh, etc. Those things are uh, most likely expected. This is not prophesizing. It's simply logical when you understand the mechanics of nature. And so this video is about the final punishment, you could say. Punishment is a strong word. Uh, we're really studying the mechanics of nature, uh, but it is, in a way, the final lesson, let's say, for humanity in this Kali Yuga, the final karma. So, of course, as well, we can already easily observe this on the planet, that all of this has, in fact, already begun. The facts are present with our 
current state of humanity and the multiple natural disasters that are occurring everywhere at an accelerating rate. Uh, you can also simply look at the news, our degenerated type of entertainment in this planet, compared to other planets, if you have the opportunity to study about them, uh, especially in the superior worlds. And best of all, we can look within ourselves to verify the degeneration of this current race. And when we start to do these practices of really observing the psychological state of ourselves, uh, of humanity, of being present from moment to moment and really understanding human nature in a very intimate, in-depth way, uh, seeing it in the internal world as well, being able to have experiences of those sorts. Uh, we also understand in truth and honesty uh, that we are a part of all of this. And each one of us has to learn how to answer for it through responsibility and honesty if we want to be able to walk an authentic path of spirituality. So part of this video is really about teaching us or showing us that, yes, this era is very difficult, but it also provides for us the best opportunity for awakening. The more darkness there is in one's life, the more opportunity there is also for awakening. And we'll learn about this too in this video. Now, Herculubus is precisely known by modern science as Bernard's star, also recognized as the fastest moving planet and also recognized to be moving directly towards our Earth. I say modern science in quotes because modern science is not really science at all. It's quite dogmatic and really does not know much at all about the laws of nature. We'll talk about some of this too. So you may have heard about this topic before, but we're going to study it from a Gnostic perspective. And before I do, I just want to say, um, I never thought I'd actually do a public lecture on this. I had an impulse this week to do this video after the Age of Aquarius one, uh, since the two are very related. But I admit I had some reluctancy, uh, thinking perhaps, People aren't ready to hear it, and also on top of that, quite frankly, most people are so lost in the antichrist of materialistic, atheistic science that this kind of topic is perhaps pushing it too far for a lot of people, and no doubt many will react and attack these ideas, probably posting some intellectual studies trying to refute these claims uh, made in this video, but as Gnostics we know that isn't real knowledge. So skeptical intellectual people will remain skeptical and intellectually centered, for that's how they are. They are polarized uh, in their energy in this way, and there's not much one can do about that unless uh, those people would like to open their minds in a more gradual way with other topics, but here we are uh, studying something quite deep. So each one of us is absolutely free to accept or deny these claims, to believe or not to believe. Just remember that believing is not very useful. Direct knowledge and awakening of consciousness is useful and is what we strive for here. And uh, we have already seen on this channel many tools to start to awaken our consciousness, to start receiving nuggets of truth in our experience, not thinking or theorizing about things, but actually touching them, sensing them, seeing them in the superior worlds, the astral plane, the mental plane, etc. These inner dimensions are not dreams, they are something concrete, ineffable, and more substantial, actually, than physical waking life. You usually uh, come back to the physical uh, feeling like it is more like a dream. And it's always good to remind ourselves, too, that these great states and experiences are not achieved by a uh, sort of spiritual ambition. We should not walk the path and meditate to think that we will receive lots of in, uh, lots of experiences. So it's a paradoxal practice, right, to really awaken. We have to be free from desire completely, but through that we 
also gain a genuine awakened consciousness. And when we experience phenomena like this in a real way, when we open ourselves up to knowledge without delusion of ego, there's no denying it because it's just as fresh uh, as remembering your memories from yesterday. And so through that, we become our own pioneers of cosmic science and stop relying on unreliable secondhand dogmas. So at the very least, I'm just sharing with you the Gnostic teachings to which you may or may not take an interest. And if not, there's no need to listen. Uh, otherwise, well, to live life mentally reacting to things is quite useless and a, a waste of time. And that is part of the very reason why one does not become an awakened person, why one does not become a man or woman of knowledge and remains instead an intellectual, reactionary, humanoid animal. Nothing more, right? So I think we can all agree uh, that if there is some truth, if someone discovers something, uh, it should be shared to everyone, even if people reject it or don't like it. And with that sort of uh, ethical philosophy, uh, I thought that, you know, I should make this video maybe with music, with pictures and videos, but I concluded that just a normal video, just having a conversation, uh, showing my face to you like this uh, would be best to hopefully show you in honesty in truth, in trust, and in a sincere way that I really do not want to promote any form of false beliefs, fanaticism, dogma, fear-mongering about some uh, strange conspiracy, nothing like that. But I just want to present to you, at the very least, a possibility. And when it comes to possibilities, it would be unwise and absurd to just simply reject it mindlessly. Because unless you are a truly awakened master of this cosmos, then you simply know nothing. And to think we know, we know something simply from reading uh, books on philosophy or uh, spiritual books or even Gnostic books or books from modern science, that is a lie. That is an illusion. Real knowledge comes from within, real gnosis. And so with that knowledge as well, that most of us feel that we already know everything and there's not really much, uh, you know, to learn, uh, I would say most people would say to this claim in this video, oh, of course a planet isn't coming to Earth. That's ridiculous. Well, really? How do you know that? Have you inquired in a serious way? How do you really come to that conclusion? Have you seen it for yourself? Do we think so highly of ourselves that we think nothing will happen to us? I say all this giving this somewhat long disclaimer because I don't want this video to be seen as another foolish new age fantasy which promotes some kind of ridiculous belief or fearful conspiracy or something like that. And before I made it, I thought, how can I make a video with such an enormous claim without making it come across as something fearful or dogmatic? And I realized there's no way I can do that. This video will spread in that way. Uh, that is this type of information's fate, you could say. It is precisely that type of shadow that it will cast to many people because when esoteric knowledge is shared with the masses, all turns rotten and meaningless through the mind. The ego rips it to shreds or gives itself another reason to be fearful or it blindly just believes it in a dogmatic way without any intelligent consciousness or awareness. And well, why does humanity do this? Well, to start all of this off, uh, speaking esoterically, humanity is already dead. Or in other words, humanity is the living dead. It's ironic we like to uh, watch movies or play video games with zombies because that reality is not far from the truth. Physical illusion and the physical dimension just clothes us here 
puts a veil around our perception and fools us into thinking that we are truly alive with life in the full sense of the word life, when in truth, we are not. So the secret path of truly awakening consciousness is to discover how to resurrect back into the light and life of divinity. Until then, we are just ghosts walking in a dream, unaware of even how our dreams work or that we are even dreaming. So I encourage you to uh, read a PDF by my dear friend Emmanuel, the author of the uh, recommended books that I uh, made a video about recently. He goes into exactly this, that the path is about exiting the world of the dead, the ego three-dimensional world of illusion, of Maya, and entering back into the unity and oneness of God, of the all in the superior dimensions, in our direct experience and our direct consciousness. Okay, so let's get more precisely into understanding Herculubus. I invite you to watch an interview with the Chilean astronomer Carlos Ferrada. He was an incredible astronomer and is famous for predicting the strongest earthquake ever recorded with a magnitude of 9.5, which killed 50,000 people and left 60,000 injured. He also predicted other earthquakes like this too. So this astronomer also observed and studied Herculubus in depth, saying that this planet is six times larger than Jupiter, it is red, uh, that it is more like a comet planet since it moves so fast and that it also has a some sort of gaseous tail and that also when it arrives passing near Earth it will bring with it a lot of catastrophes and the Earth's rotating axis will start to accelerate violently as a result, bringing with it all of these natural disasters, which are essentially already happening now. And actually, if you look into Earth's uh, rotational axis, it is already accelerating and has been gradually accelerating for a while. And scientists uh, don't know why. And well, now we know why here, right? Because there is a new giant magnetic influence slowly interacting with our system. So he also described how this planet does not obey the conventional norms and understanding of our supposed laws of physics. And this is important to point out as well that materialist science that is devoid of intuitional knowledge and guidance knows nothing of all of this and is always full of uh, contradictions and they especially it's it's a big problem in uh, science in general that they believe that mm, rules and laws of physics are a constant that they do not change they do and there are many instances as to where scientific research will show some kind of contradiction with uh, new findings. For example, they stated that the Andromeda galaxy will collide with our Milky Way galaxy in 5 billion years. Yet, as we always see, new evidence now shows that uh, our galaxy is already colliding and merging with Andromeda. So, in the same way, scientists will confirm Bernard's star is on course towards Earth, but they will lie or simply just be mistaken that it will arrive in millions or billions of years. You know, modern science is very much like they rigidly believe in all of the indoctrinated, educated dogma and rules laid out in universities, believing all conventional theories or rules that have been solidified physically are correct. And then they don't think for themselves and essentially base their work on fundamental flaws. And that's very ignorant and lacks a lot of critical intuitional perception in when doing research. And it's very much like if we in the uh, spiritual community rigidly believe that, you know, some old Western monks in the past made some spiritual progression by uh, whipping themselves, well then, you know, if we continued like that and we based all of our spirituality and philosophy on 
that <laughs> whipping ourselves would be lost, right? Always just doing that because we believe uh, it's the normal way to awaken consciousness when obviously that doesn't awaken consciousness at all. So there's a good lecture on all of this if you're interested by Rupert Sheldrake on exposing some of these false laws and dogmas of modern science and how it's essentially disabling our research and understanding. Similarly, you can also learn on the History Channel about the fact that the majority of stars come in pairs like twins. And of course, this system of Tylo is in fact our sort of sun's dark twin. So anyway, since I'm not personally very interested in the many technicalities and scientific details and observations one can discover about this interesting planet, since my main message here is a spiritual one and what we are supposed to do with this information in this age, uh, I invite you, if you're interested in the technical analysis of all of this, to watch a recent interview with a physicist who wrote an in-depth report on Carlos Ferrada's findings alongside her own modern findings too. It's quite interesting. Uh, she is one of the very few respectable scientists today who is, you know, daring enough to give time and consideration to seriously looking at all of this and not censor it like many organizations have already done. And of course, if you personally have other interesting information to share about Herculubus, feel free to share in the comments below. Now, as for my own findings, as you know, we strive in these studies to be genuine practitioners, not to just study spiritual science, but to actually live it and experience it. And one of my most first, most shocking experiences in the astral in relation to this was where I was standing in the middle of a road in broad daylight with storms in the distance, and there was a sense of urgency and panic around me, people driving fast, not knowing what to do, and I saw other people looking up, pointing at the sky, and I then look up and I see this huge red planet in the sky. It was incredible, an incredible sight. It, it did look like Mars, but of course it wasn't. And yeah, it was terrifying, of course, but a really uh, awe-inspiring sight. And with that, for those who are taking a very intense interest in this topic, my message to you is many people I've met who are in these Gnostic studies have had already some form of experience in the astral showing them some kind of event that will occur in the future in relation to Herculubus. I think since this is a topic of great importance, divinity seems to be very generous with showing those with sincere hearts experiences of this. So really ask divinity yourself to show you the reality of it, of this coming event. I have no doubt uh, many of you will have an experience of some sort with it uh, if you wish to have it. So Remember that the astral plane is of the fifth dimension. In terms of physics, this means it is beyond time. Therefore, naturally, one can perceive into past or future events there with that type of astral consciousness and understand that in the superior worlds, this event has already happened. Herculubus has already passed by the planet. It is just a matter of time until it materializes, until it manifests here in the physical dimension. Now, as for when this planet will arrive, there have been quite a few predictions or certain statements uh, from masters as well, but also bear in mind the following is also mixed with my own intuition and opinions. So it seems to me Based on various things you can study, including the Gnostic teachings from the Masters, uh, that this planet will arrive sometime between 2043 and 2500. There are several uh, trusted texts from the Masters stating this, and also some predictions about it being around the year 2400 as well. We say 2043 because somewhere between 2040 
and 2043, the 13th Katun in Mayan wisdom will begin. I won't go into Mayan wisdom of the 13 Katuns here, uh, but I invite you to read the free PDF, Popol Vul, in the description. Lots of homework in this video, right? And uh, there in that book, you can learn about this wisdom where between 2040 and 2043 is the true beginning of the end. It is where many catastrophes will begin, earthquakes, volcanoes, storms, etc. I have also seen in the astral as well how there will be a very specific uh, event amidst all of this. Uh, very specific devastating events of a colossus tornado made of fire like nobody has ever seen, like nothing ever recorded in history. I have no idea when it will happen. I witnessed this in the astral from space. I have no idea how uh, giant fire tornadoes can be made, uh, perhaps in combination with a volcano. I don't know. Perhaps uh, some of you have an idea. Let me know in the comments. Uh, all I know is that it will happen eventually one day and that it is tied to these events and these end times connected to the planet Herculubus. Now, we should not take these dates literally or entirely literally. There are some esoteric mysteries behind it. These are primarily symbolic dates, which is why I said somewhere between 2043 and 2500. 2500 equals 2, or 2 plus 5 equals 7. As you know, if you've been following this channel, 7 relates to Kundalini and the Kundabutha, the chakras and the seven seals. It's understood that humanity is currently going through the apocalypse of the seven seals. And as we continue to go into this era, uh, 2040 and 2043 is when we will begin to break the seventh seal, the last seal. And thus the beginning of the end will commence. And also remember the seventh planet in esoteric astrology is Saturn, the planet related to the ray of death. Now, we could go into these uh, esoteric studies all day if we wanted to, but I invite you to put all of this theory aside and reflect on humanity today. If you are a person of intuitive knowledge and you are well practiced and have sufficient understanding of human nature, you will know you can see and perceive the state of humanity. And if your inner senses are awakened enough, you can see what our current humanity really looks like in the internal worlds, in the superior dimensions. You know, sometimes I think, how is even humanity still alive today when you really comprehend it in a deep way within yourself? Because truly, the spiritual dimension of reality is something very, very different to what physical reality looks like. Appearances are not what they seem. The Dalai Lama teaches this very clearly. Our source of negative energy, all of our negative emotions, derive from the ego accepting reality as it appears. Understand this Buddhist wisdom that Nothing exists as it appears. I'm reminded again of that scene in the movie The Matrix where Neo is living in this uh, simulation of his life ignorantly until he finally awakens and he realizes reality is something far more terrifying, severe, and fatal than he ever realized or that he could ever imagine. And again, this is why occult and esoteric knowledge was hidden for so long and doused in mystery and symbolism. Because if we are to describe this reality in a very plain way, everyone uh, would either not accept it or become very fearful. And that reality is that we are already in hell. We are in an abyss of darkness. But we're so asleep that we don't even see it. 
Everyone is too busy dreaming about heaven, their next holiday destination, what we're going to do for Christmas, without realizing the infernos that is already in activity within all of us. So, by law of opposites, if we want to understand and integrate heaven, we have to study the dimensions of hell. We have to comprehend our subconscious hells, or it's just called subconsciousness or unconsciousness if the word hell is too uh, emotionally strong for you. But it is also a, it's a psychological thing, but it's also energetic too. So that's what we have to do. We have to comprehend our subconsciousness and the depths of that reality within us and how it works as well if we want to take a true path of awakening. So I know heaven and hell are strong emotional terms for a lot of people, but they're very real. It's just our understanding of those things are based in fear without actual enlightenment over them. And we have a lot of conditioning in uh, conventional wisdom and religious fanaticism. But hell and heaven, they are real things. Uh, real things we can experience in the superior dimensions as well. And so what we carry within, we manifest without. And what happens when 8 billion people on this planet carry this destructive energy of these lower dimensions? Obviously, it materializes outwardly as destruction. But everyone believes they are in a good place internally, understandably, and we decorate or hide or disguise our physical life with rainbows and butterflies believing all is okay, and we take comfort in believing and following conventional laws and ways of being and ways of life. For example, we think or base, uh, many people can base their entire lives on uh, simply the steps of that I must get a job, uh, I must go to university, uh, invest in a pension, I must get life insurance and uh, find a nice uh, home for me to die in. And, and that's that, you know? You know, can you see how these things stop us from finding our true life's purpose from moment to moment? Uh, especially if we take a lot of comfort and conformity in these beliefs, which cause mechanical conditioned behaviors. It just keeps us asleep. Right, you know, I um, I live in a city here in Canada, and the other day I was walking through it, thinking, how does physical illusion make it so convincing that there is peace and order on this planet? And well, in reality, it is not like that. But at the same time, we are given some space and some time right now to do the work. And I truly believe that it is a mercy and compassion and grace of the gods that we are still allowed time to be here and, and do the work. And this is due to the divine nature of the higher worlds and the great Christic masters who protect humanity, that they allow us and, and help us and give us extra time and Truly, my friends, if you would understand what a mercy and blessing it is to have time to be alive in this moment, uh, to walk the path, then you would walk it in every moment of your life and uh, commit everything to it. So this is also part of this video's message that there is time. There is time to walk the path. Don't be distracted. Don't worry about your worries. Don't worry about Herculubus too much. Uh, don't worry about your situations, uh, your doubts and concerns. Simply realize what has to be done here and now and take the necessary steps to learn about yourself and, and meditate and, and expand, right? Nobody knows when the true end will come. That is up to God. Materialistic science thinks that the laws of physics is a constant, that it is linear and unchanging. They are mistaken. Gnostics know that just as the laws of nature, our own personal laws of our internal world and our being, 
just as those can change and transform and expand and grow, uh, so too does the outer world. So reflect on that, that the cosmic scientific laws of nature are always changing. But are we? That's the question. Are we changing? Do we follow that change? As we wake up each morning, are we receptive to the new energies of each day? What spiritual laws do we follow exactly? Laws of the inferno within us, of listening to what the legion within us says, or of those laws of the kingdom, right? Of divinity, of the being. Perhaps we follow the law of chasing money, the laws of vanity, the law of self-centeredness. What does that create in our lives on a mass scale too? Laws of lust, perhaps, of violence, of hatred. There are new laws being placed on this planet, and if we don't obey them, if we don't follow them, then it's clear that we won't have a place here in the kingdom, in the new earth. I know that that term, the new earth, is very popular, especially on YouTube, in new age types of videos. And many people believe they will be part of the new earth because, uh, simply because they agree or believe in it and dream about it. But the truth is, uh, unfortunately, with pain, uh, we can understand that most of us will not, or most of them will not. Because complete inner transformation is required. It's not a moral judgment of some higher religiously fanatic God. This is scientific. It's about the laws of our own being and if it is simply compatible with it, right? You can think of a, a Windows 95 computer. That, that was at least the, the first computer I had uh, when I was a child. And uh, that's an old operating system, right? Uh, it relates to the age of Pisces. But now there is new operating systems, right? A lot more efficient, a lot more um, sophisticated with artificial intelligence technology, all of that, right? And we simply need a new, more sophisticated, more efficient, uh, precise level of being that is compatible with that new software in this coming age. And so on the old uh, Windows 95 operating system, you could write and dream about all of the new things in the new earth, right? But is that operating system going to be compatible with the new operating system? No. The whole thing needs to actually be changed, completely recoded in order to be compatible with the new system, with the new earth. And so if they do not if we do not practice integrating the values and virtues one needs to ground of all of these philosophies of the new earth into our being, then we won't be compatible, right? So we have to understand what it means to really liberate the infinite potential in the seed of man, to become a cosmic woman or a cosmic man what it means to revolutionize the consciousness in a radical way, to become who we are in our most divine, most natural state, most elevated state of being, and not of the unnatural state of ego. So we have to comprehend how we are not true representatives of this cosmos, but actually we are just strange creatures on this planet doing uh, ridiculous, illusory things. And I'm sure that other humanities, other species look at us with much curiosity as to uh, why we do the things we do on this planet. And so that's just how we are. On the other hand, true individuals, people who have stepped into becoming legitimate beings of this cosmos exist. They truly exist in the eternity of the higher realms. And those are people who have truly awakened, which are really uh, very few. And part of that group are all of these great masters that we've been uh, exploring on this channel and which you can, you know, read many things about. But they also exist in space. We call them aliens, 
but they are not. They are real people, not like us. We are the ones who are truly alien. We have alienated ourselves to everything that is natural and cosmic and created a world which says it's okay to be this way. And we'll look more into uh, what their role is as well in this coming age and how they can help us. And so, in relation to her Colubus, we might think, okay, I understand. Inner change is required. We all understand this, right? But also we might say, uh, this planet may not arrive for another few hundred years, so what's the point? That's a very long time away. Really, that is not a long time at all. To our conditioned ego perception of time, we say it's a long time away. But in reality, it is not. In the higher worlds, in the higher perspectives, it is really not. It is a very, very short time away in terms of a, a cosmic scale. And we cannot wait to be born into our next life with a sleeping consciousness all over again. What if we don't even find the path, right? We have to do as much work as we can now in order to store our treasures, our gems of consciousness within our internal worlds that holds within the part of us that is eternal. Not this physical body which will die, but something that is an internal within us. So in reality, from a much higher perspective, there is essentially no time left. Reflect on that. There is no time, meaning the new earth is of the fifth dimension, where it is beyond time. And those who cling onto the ego being bound by mechanical laws of time will not continue into that era, but instead remain suffering with the time-bound ego. As Master Samael says, it's not just desire we have to release, but even the memory of desire. That's the type of intensity and elevated level of being we need to incarnate into our being and into our awareness from moment to moment. Now, what about those who are really walking the path? Who will actually be allowed into the new earth, the new age of Aquarius? And how will it happen if there's going to be great cataclysms and catastrophes on our planet? Well, this is something else uh, I've also experienced and seen in the astral. I saw great floods, storms, and darkness filling the earth like a thief coming in the night. And those who are on the path, those who are awakening with this new level of consciousness, who have been really transforming their consciousness in a sincere way, and working to dissolve the psychological elements which keep us so trapped and asleep, it is those people who will be chosen, you can say, uh, to enter into the next era on this planet. And if we need help during those catastrophic moments, we will be assisted by our brothers and sisters in space. In other words, the extraterrestrials. But I don't want to call them extraterrestrials because truly they are simply real human beings. They are cosmic men and women who have awakened consciousness. And through the laws of cosmic intuition and clairvoyance, call it whatever you like, they will just know, they will be guided to as to who it is they are to help in those difficult moments in the future. And I saw how there will be ships, spaceships, of course, that will cast a great light in the darkness and they will distribute sort of flying platforms under ships. Um, you know what window cleaners uh, use on skyscrapers, but bigger and circular and, and flying of course, and uh, they will build these specifically to save humanity when the time comes. And then they will bring them to a safe land in a secret place in the Pacific Ocean. Now, from what I understand and from what I saw, uh, this won't be some quick events. This will last for many years of helping us, moving certain uh, people to different lands according to the kind of catastrophes that are happening 
in the nature of the earth. So just remember, we have to be intelligent and intuitive about all of this, about this topic. Uh, we should not be fanatical about it, always thinking or being fearful about it, being fearful about when it will come, etc. <clears throat> I think truly when the time is coming, when it truly arrives, those who are more awakened will know and they will feel it coming. And those who aren't will feel a lot of confusion. People probably saying it's the planet Mars, uh, the media trying to cover it up with any kind of desperate explanation. But it's good to warn about all of this now. It's good to at least consider it so that we can get our head screwed on straight because at the very least, uh, humanity is spiraling into some kind of chaos. And it is good to at least get our spirituality straight, right? Because I don't think our world is going to be the same at all in the coming decades. Um, and I know YouTube analytics tell me uh, most viewers on this channel are in their 20s and 30s, so we'll all be living through this in the next decades. And um, I hope you remember this video every time some major event happens in the future and that you don't react to it whenever you see it on the news or it's happening uh, in your life as well around you. And instead, try to sense the esoteric significance behind what's going on. Try to keep and have some spiritual strength in holding on to this higher perspective of the planet, that this is part of nature. And uh, as long as you are following the path, that you will also be guided uh, out of all of this chaos and all of this darkness. And of course, there's already intense change happening technologically, politically, socially, many more wars now, right? Um, rumors of wars. Uh, it would come to absolutely no surprise if World War Three happened any time soon. I hope not, but well, that's just the way it is. Um, I think it's likely that uh, World War Three will happen before uh, Herculubus, before these end times. And you don't need to be some awakened or educated Gnostic to understand that. You only need to intuit the unconscious psychological ego patterns of humanity. If you know yourself, you know humanity. And you'll be able to see that during this time, the ego is becoming desperate. And remember that the ego uses our spiritual powers. It knows when the end is. And as the end draws nearer, the ego also feels its impending death. And in its desperation, it will do anything. It will be so volatile, so unpredictable. But what we can predict is its inherent destructive nature. And I think this is something that uh, a lot of New Age communities don't discuss a lot of too. That many people say a new earth is coming. Yes. That there will be a new army of awakened humans. Yes. But there will also be a group of people who are going to be extremely evil and extremely perverse. And so with that understanding, out of all of this uncertainty, chaos, lack of faith, hatred, there will obviously be something like a World War III. It's completely logical, psychologically and spiritually. So I say all this because, again, this is something I've seen in the astral, specifically in this experience, uh, parts of the UK and the US becoming very military places in the future. Many places of the country that were previously common public places uh, turned into war zones uh, all of a sudden. Many bombs being uh, made in the distances, uh, lots of bomb shelters being built everywhere. They'll become a uh, common place. Uh, it will be normal to see aircrafts of war in the sky. Um, I also saw how there will be groups of people rebelling and avoiding government safety advice. Uh, so governments like completely losing control, uh, sort of becoming an, a state of anarchy in a lot of places. Um, and people trying to create their own independent uh, communities amidst it all. So I guess it's sort of like when we watch uh, things like The Walking Dead, right? That's sort of... Um, 
their own separate communities and and factions. It's incredible how we see these in uh, TV series. This is something that will be become a reality. It, as I said before, the ego knows what will happen, uh, but we don't express it in an esoteric way, in a Gnostic way. Uh, the best way that we see it is through fantasizing about them uh, in egotistical fantasies. But here we can understand in a real way, in a concrete way, that uh, there is a reality. There's a reason why we enjoy fantasizing about those things. So in short, there's going to be a lot of radical change, and which is why radical spirituality is needed. This is why the Gnostic teachings are so powerful and so radical. And this is the time now to get ready for that, to understand how to listen to our being, our intuition, which is another main message of this video. If you want to stay on a safe path, start walking the real spiritual path. Uh, do what your intuition is really telling you to do in your conscience, what you feel and know is right, according to your own inner judgment of your own inner God, right? Don't listen to the religical, religical, sorry, the, the religious fanatical uh, God of judgment, right? Listen to your own divinity, your own real God, uh, and try to find discernment in that, and try to work towards discerning the trickster of the mind, of the ego, that tries to obscure that original intuition. So we have to walk the real spiritual path if we want to be guided eventually and start to grow stronger uh, in this spiritual way. We have to learn how to meditate deeply every day for longer periods, uh, learn how to self-observe from moment to moment, comprehend our psychological states, our ego conditioning, transmute our energy, help others, develop intuition, remember your dreams, study the Gnostic teachings. With faith and practice, you will be guided internally. You will find a new way to live and be, not based in dreams and theories, but based in being in the being from moment to to moment, totally aware, totally awake, and whatever changes are necessary to occur in your life will occur through superior impulses from your being. You won't resist them because you will learn to just trust the being. So if it says to move to another country one day, you won't think about it. You will just go. You won't listen to fear. You won't listen to anxiety. You will just, you will know to go. So that's how the path is. Attachment to nothing and always receptive to doing what the being tells us to do at any moment. My friend at the Three Mountains channel is very correct when she essentially says the fourth factor of awakening consciousness is to always follow the being no matter what. As a lot of you know, the three factors of uh, awakening consciousness is psychological death, transmutation and rebirth, and sacrifice for humanity, helping others. And the fourth way is to always follow our being. But of course, we struggle with that because we aren't following our being. A lot of people ask, how do I follow my being? Start following it. It's very simple. What are we following though then instead? So we struggle with this in a very material way because right now money is humanity's God. We don't follow our true God, our true being. Everything everyone does and dreams about is for more money, for worrying about money, investing in pensions and life insurances, right? It's, it's absurd when you, when you realize this. The real life insurance is the spiritual reality of God, of the cosmic intelligence that lies deep within the heart of every one of us. And that, my friends, is a form of powerful magic. This is why in Gnosis we say materialistic science is the physical expression of the Antichrist because it does not teach or abide by the laws and magic of the Christ, of the Christ energy. And it's obvious that the laws of the Christ will rule over the new earth instead. 
It is very obvious, and one doesn't need astral travel for this, it's obvious that there will be no money, or cities, or perverse entertainment, pubs, clubs, governments, in the new earth, in the new age of Aquarius. It will be an age of true freedom and true individuals, not people of mechanical, autonomous ways of being who can't think for themselves. Everyone will have complete freedom and full responsibility uh, of who they are and what kind of life they live and are the kind of energy that they bring into existence. So money will be a useless and meaningless thing completely. People will help each other for the sake of it. And all of this isn't wishful thinking or naive dreaming of a utopia. This is just the type of reality that materializes when people awaken their consciousness. Compassion and joy and peace and finding happiness in very simple things in life. That all comes from the natural state of the being. And so to continue to ground this quite shocking knowledge into something practical instead of fearful, we should simply use this as a warning to just start walking the path uh, where we are. And that's it. Start moving our feet forward step by step. That's all. But we should not also walk the path out of fear, worrying about what will happen if we don't walk it. We should walk it because we have an innate intuition in our hearts of our spiritual purpose and uh, that we just really feel that we want to do it and that we wish to be initiated into this consciousness as real beings. Why would we not want that? Why would we not want to feel a sense of belonging in our existence? in this planet? Why do we not want to feel that when we walk outside and, and look at the stars, that we feel a sense of love and unity and oneness and to feel God and to be f feeling that we are at ho home in this planet? Why would we not want that? To become real beings, no longer being aliens, but to join our brothers and sisters in space, in universal love and unity. So this all, of course, for some of you, I understand that uh, it might seem very difficult, especially with our current environment and situation on the planet. But understand that we are actually in the perfect environment for us to achieve this state this state of realization. It is the perfect environment for us to awaken. Remember always that pressure and high temperatures creates diamonds. If you live in a physical environment where it is very difficult, many problems, responsibilities, people are always testing you, that is good because you have more opportunity to self-observe the elements within you that you need to work with. That is your spiritual matter, your spiritual homework that you need to work with. Uh, you can see the video called The Psychological Gym of Life for more on all of that. So this is why everything is as it is right now. We are in the conditions we are in due to our karma. And our karma, we need to stop thinking of karma as such a bad thing that we always want to avoid and, and dissolve completely all the time. But it's better to comprehend that our karma provides our particular school of life of where we are, right? Every single one of us has a completely unique school of life. We have all different relationships. We all have different idiosyncrasies of the ego complex within us that we have to work with. Uh, we all live in different countries, different houses. Everything is different and we all have a very special and unique school of life to work with. And of course, on a uh, mass human scale, we all have a very just difficult uh, path to a very difficult school because humanity needs this. We need more pressure 
to awaken even more. We need to go out of our comfort zones. We need to be courageous people and embrace our changes. Because if we don't, well, remember that pressure can either burst a pipe if we don't rise up to the challenges. And so it is best, you know, to really avoid spiritual teachings which promote the opposite of embracing our personal challenges. This is plastered all over YouTube. Escape reincarnation, don't get tricked into rebirth, and things like this. Many people believe these things, and honestly, it's terribly ignorant, um, especially if one doesn't understand it intelligently. It is necessary for our awareness, our essence, our consciousness to descend and undergo the necessary pressures in life in order to awaken. Ignorance always teaches us to escape. It teaches escapism, to avoid suffering. Real spirituality teaches voluntary suffering, to embrace suffering as a tool, as a means to awaken and gain self-knowledge, to understand the lessons behind every moment, the good and the bad. Suffering is like the lessons given to us by God or the lords of karma. But since we resist that suffering and what really make suffering even worse for ourselves, uh, then we don't learn and don't progress. And well, friends, if you've not found enough reason then in your personal path to uh, actually walk the path, or perhaps you are walking the path but don't have enough determination to start uh, penetrating more deeply into your own being, let this topic of this whole video be yet another reason to start investigating all of this for ourselves and start to walk the path for ourselves and let us stop being in the delusion of thinking we have time because again the superior reality is that there is no time in eternity and it is eternity that we have to uh, start to integrate into our lives. And if you start to really comprehend the science of eternity, you'll understand why it is said that there is eternal suffering in hell. It doesn't necessarily mean it's forever and that there's no way of escaping, but that we suffer indefinitely until we change our laws within meaning new ways and levels of being that invoke new inner worlds according to those laws of being, right? In the Gnostic teachings, we understand how to transcend karma by understanding that when an inferior law is transcended by a superior law, the superior law washes away the inferior law. That's something to meditate on, especially if you're ever feeling lost. That in those moments of negative feelings, simply just to realize, instead of feeling bad that we are having negative emotions, but just to simply realize that the inner world and atmosphere that you are experiencing was caused by lower laws, inferior laws of being, and that simply the antidote to wash away the effects to those causes is by establishing superior laws and ways of being in your life, when you no longer want to suffer from those uh, inferior causes. And then you will experience an inner reality of a more superior, more refined, more balanced state which of course is just the beginning. The journey goes so much more deeper uh, the more we commit, the more uh, effort that we put into our path. And of course, if we can maintain that, it will also begin to reflect in our outer reality too. So friends, let us stop wasting time and let us walk the path within of awakening the consciousness and realize that true wealth lies within the heart of developed virtue purity of soul and awakened awareness from moment to moment. We are here in these times, here and now, to transform, to take this great path and to have the opportunity of knowing ourselves in a truer and deeper way than we ever have before. 
And with that, my dear friends, I leave you with some footage of the great master Samael on Vior in one of his most famous speeches. The whole speech is about 20 minutes long. Uh, the link will be below if you want to watch it. But I just share this part since it's very related to what we've been exploring here. Now, of course, the master doesn't always speak in the following way like he does. Uh, this was just the very special moment, a moment where he expressed passionately a call for humanity to wake up. And he spoke in the way he did, in the following way, which you'll see, because this is also what he yearned of for his dear students. Un momento de confusión. La, la humanidad se encuentra en estado caótico. Hay crisis mundial y bancarrota de todos los principios morales. Las gentes se han lanzado a la guerra, unos contra otros y todos contra todos. En este momento de, de confusión mundial y de bancarrota de todos, Toda, de todos los aforismos y principios herméticos no nos queda más remedio que ahondar en la sabiduría del pasado extraer de entre los códices la orientación precisa para guiarnos en el momento presente beber en la fuente tradicional de la augusta sabiduría de la naturaleza Buscar los primeros cauces de la sapiencia cósmica. El hombre en sí mismo es un misterio. Los antiguos dijeron, no se te ipsum. Hombre, conócete a ti mismo y conocerás al universo y a los dioses. Ha llegado la hora de investigarnos a fondo, de salir al encuentro de nuestro propio destino, de ahondar en las profundidades de sí mismos. En verdad no estamos con tumbres anticuadas de esta época, con los dogmas de tantas sectas políticas y religiosas, con, la, con los estados de ansiedad, con la ignorancia, con el dolor, con el hambre, con la miseria, con el asqueante materialismo, con esos viejos edificios, con esas calles horribles, con este humo que destruye no más teorías reaccionarias y anticuadas, queremos la revolución de la conciencia, queremos un mundo de rebeldes inteligentes, queremos en verdad hacer arder la antorcha de los genios de las pirámides de Teotihuacán y de Egipto y la sapiencia de Grecia y de Roma sobre la faz de la tierra. Han escuchado las palabras del maestro Samael Aún Beor, Cristo Rojo de Acuario, quinto jinete del Apocalipsis, Buda Maitella, vivo ejemplo de sacrificio por amor a la humanidad. A él deberá seguir. Continúa con su obra. Lucha por transformarte internamente.